Hello everyone, welcome to day 18th of March Lead Code Challenge and today's question is Wiggle Subsequence. So in this question, we are given an array and we are asked to return the longest length of a wiggle, wiggle sequence. So remember, the term is subsequence, sequence here, not substring. And what is the definition of a wiggle sequence? It is a sequence where the difference between successive numbers strictly alternate between positive and negative. So it, the kind of structure that they are looking for is up, down, up, down, up, down. And we need to identify the longest length of such subsequence, not substring. So let's try and understand with few examples here. So the four, in this one, we have 1, 7, 4, 9, 2, 5. And the difference is 6 minus 3. Then we have 5. Then we have minus 7. And then we have 3. So this complete string is a wiggle sequence since the, the difference alternate between positive and negative up down up down and in the contrast this sequence 1 4 7 2 5 and this 1 7 4 5 5 are not wiggle sequences what we are interested in we are interested in the longest subsequence not substring that can be obtained uh, from this string ideally in the here we need to return the length of such subsequence so the interesting uh, case is this one so we have 1 7 5 10 13 15 10 5 16 8 there are several subsequences that have that can achieve this length one is this 1 7 10 13 10 16 8 and its length is 7 so if you look at this case then you will understand that they are asking for a subsequence not a substring and let's try and understand the algorithm by the uh, presentation that i have created also this question is very close to me one of my friend was asked this question in google so uh, at upfront this question looks like a very tricky question but while once you'll understand how to do it it's a very simple question very very simple question you, I, I bet you have done such questions in the past. Let me just take a pen. And we are good. So I have taken a slightly longer example than what was specified in the question. I have added few more elements uh, to the input set. We have 1, 17, 5, 10, 10, 13, 15, 10, 5, 16, and 8. Also, what we understood from the question that we are only looking for alternate things, not the amount of extent of that uphill or the downhill. A slight uphill is equivalent to a bigger uphill. So these two are treated equally because both of them identifies a hill. Similarly, a valley, a small valley is equal to a deep valley, a less deep valley because we are only looking for a valley, not the extent to which its depth is. So let's try and understand a state array uh, where I have, I, I have donated up with u, down with d and equal with e. So since the first element is 1, I can't do anything about it we'll move ahead and move to the we'll start the iteration from the first index up till the end of the index so we have one and then we have 17 here so this is an uphill i assigned u to this then we have a downhill i assigned d to this then again we have an uphill i assigned 10 to this u to this since it's an up state this is an equal state so I assign E here and then we have an uphill again. So I assigned U here, then we have an uphill again, then assign U here again. Then we have D, then 5 is again less than 10. We have D again. Then we have 16. 16 is greater than 5. That means we have an uphill U and then again a downhill. 8 is less than 16. So in the end, what all states do we have? u t u e u 
u u d d u and d so listen to this very carefully we will you we will count each group of d's and u's together as a single unit how are we going to do that the first unit the first one is u then we have d then we have u and all these u's including e's equality signs would be treated as one single unit so all these four values since they are since all of them lie to the same group that is of uphill we will have to count them as a single unit similarly for the other part where we have d's these two d's together followed by a single u and then a d so how many such units are there u the, this is the first one then we have one again this is again then we have the third unit then we have the fourth unit then we have the fifth unit and then we have the sixth unit so in totality how many units were there total of six units and what we will do we will include uh, the first element as well so six plus one will give us seven so in totality we have seven consecutive wiggle elements and there can be multiple sequences of uh, these elements because there are multiple groups uh, of same u's and d's together so you can treat each one and generate multiple sequences but that would be not part of this question and this can be easily solved using the two pointer approach uh, we can take two pointers and uh, treat all the consecutive u's and d's as a single unit i have a smarter solution uh, than this so let's quickly jump on to the second algorithm so i have taken the similar case as that was specified in the previous example and here i will maintain two variables up and down and initialize them to one since the bare minimum element uh, in the wiggle array will be one the wiggle count will be one and when we have an uphill we will use downhill plus variable downhill count plus one and when we have up downhill we will use uphill count plus one so this is a cross connection uphill uphill up down equals to up plus one and up equals to down plus one so i'll tell you why i'm doing this and how this will help us achieve the solution So let's try. This is an up case. We got seventeen is greater than one. That's an up case. So we will use down plus one. Up will be updated to down plus one. That will be two. That will be up will become two. And then we have a down case. So we will use up plus one. So down will get updated to three. That is two plus one. And then we have. 10 10 is greater than 5 that's an up case so we will use down variable so we'll get 4 3 plus 1 and then we have 10 again so we will use the same down variable variable down count which is a uh, 3 and a uh, 3 plus 1 will give us 4 again also in between you saw 10 is equal to 10 so we'll you can ignore that value because that's the equality condition and then again we got 13 so 13 is greater than 10 up case so th that will give us the same value which is 4 so because 3 plus 1 is 4 so down count is help will is helping us normalize uh, the up count because every time we see consecutive ups we are using the same down variable as a result of which up will be incremented only once so this is the core crux of this problem and again we have 15 15 is greater than 13 again an up case so i've got up upgraded to 4 and then we have again an up case a down case and this got updated to 5 a uh, 4 plus 1 is 5 and then we have an up case 
so this gets updated to uh, 5 plus 1 6 and then at last we have an down case and since it's a down case we'll do the up variable so 6 plus 1 is 7 in the end we will use the logic max of up count comma down count and this will give us as our solution the maximum wiggle sequence which in this case would be 7 so what are we basically doing in this algorithm is all the consecutive u's or d's get normalized by the same count of down if it's an up case otherwise if it's a it's a down case it will be normalized by the same count of up so this is the crux of this smart solution and let's so first of all let's write the corner case nums dot length is less than one if that is the case then we simply return the answer as our length nums dot length itself for the case is zero or one otherwise let's define two variables up equals to one and integer down equals to one and let's start the loop integer i equals to 0 i is less than nums dot length minus 1 i plus plus if nums of i is less than nums of is greater than nums of i plus 1 nums of i plus 1 is greater than nums of i that means it's an uphill case uphill case what we need to do we need to update up to down plus 1 otherwise let's update let's check whether it's a downhill case how will you check whether it's a downhill case nums of i is greater than nums of i plus one downhill case and let's update down to up plus one and once we are done with this we need to simply return math dot max up comma down System dot out. Let me just print those values just to see what is actually happening there. Up plus space down. Looks good. Let's try this out. Looks like a typo. Looks great. And let me just submit it accepted what is the time complexity of this approach the time complexity is order of n and space complexity is order of one uh, thanks for watching the video hope you enjoyed it